Religion came into being, in my opinion, uh, to help us with our awe. And this is true in Hinduism, Buddhism, wherever you look. Uh, every society that's ever come into being on the planet has had to deal with the fact that we're related to a mysterious reality that we do not understand and are in wonder over. And this fact, this reality of being conscious of our consciousness and therefore being capable of this kind of wonder is the reason we have religions and the reason why societies need to have religions in order to help people relate to that wonder. This is something universal we're talking about here. Everybody, in whatever way, in whatever talk, in whatever language, experiences the awesome and the awe, and if they do, being one of the odd ones. We need to work especially on this awesomeness. And, and this is a new insight for many people trying to do Christian theology, or Buddhist theology, or Hindu theology, or Muslim theology, or Jewish theology. If you're going to use the word God, and I'll talk about Christianity. It's a devotional word. It's, it's like the word sweetheart or sweetie. It's, it's a word that has to do with loyalty, with commitment, devotion. And so you might just say that the word God is simply a devotional word for reality, the awesome reality in the Bible. In the beginning, the awesome reality created the heavens and the earth. They called it God because they recommended that final reality for their worship. And so this was God. And this is the way to understand the whole Bible. You just go through the Bible, read the Psalms, straws out the word God, stick in the word reality. The Psalm makes sense. The word points to this final overallness, to this everything. Thingness, not a thing, but the everythingness in which all things cohere. Each and every thing is contained in this everythingness. Now I'm using the word thing real generally to include Jesus and you and me and the squirrels and the birds and whatever. Each of us is a specific thing somewhere on the blackboard of reality. But the everythingness is not on this blackboard anywhere. It is the, the everything that's in which all things cohere. When the Bible and other Christian classics seem to talk about an otherworldly person, we need to remember that these writings are poetry. They're using mythic language. And we need to remember that the people who lived in pre-modern times had no difficulty using mythic language. They thought that was the way you talked about ultimate things. It's you and me that have trouble with mythic language because we've been taught scientifically that mythic language means bad, means wrong, means false or something, where that wasn't what they thought myth meant. If they even used the word myth, it was just you talked about ordinary things in an ordinary way, and you talked about huge, overwhelming things in myth. And they just had that as the way they worked at life. Jesus did. Moses did. Thomas Aquinas did. Luther did. Wesley did. It's only us, usins, that have trouble with that. It was their way of talking.